This is Valley News Live at 4. Welcome to Valley News Live at 4. Be careful out on the roads. This is what happened earlier today right here. This scene as a vehicle rolled over on I-94 just east of 34th Street in Moorhead. Now we are still waiting to hear on how many people were involved in the crash and if there were any injuries. The roads are still icy, so if you need to venture out, take your time. Slow and steady will win the race. And looking at our sky cam right now, lots of snow out there, and it's not going to be melting any time. Let's get right over to First Alert Storm Team forecaster Summer Schnellbach with the latest. Yeah, thanks so much. First Alert weather days continue for the rest of the week for this dangerous, bitter cold, and we have some snow on the way as well. But first, let's talk about that cold. Here's a snapshot of the lowest morning temperatures, the actual air temperature, not factoring in wind chill. Uh, we were at 23 degrees below zero in Fargo, 24 below in Fergus Falls, 21 below in Grand Forks 27 below in Langdon and in Faustin. Now some of the coldest wind chills frigid felt like 54 degrees below zero in can do this morning 52 below in Langdon 51 below Devil's Lake 50 below Crookston even in Fargo and in Grand Forks those morning wind chills dropped to 44 degrees below zero and there were likely places that were even colder. These are just some of the numbers we have access to at this time. This is a bit of a time lapse so you can see where that coldest air was. The shades in black, that's where morning wind chills were in the 40s and 50s below zero. Right now in Fargo, cold and icy scene. Our camera, in fact, is frozen in place. It's so cold. 16 below zero feels like 38 at the moment. Wind is out of the west at 13 miles per hour. Actual air temperature of 17 below right now in Grand Forks and Hallock, 20 below in Devil's Lake, 22 below in Landon. So bitterly cold and that's going to continue. Here's a look at your current wind chill values. Bobby, coming up, we'll walk you through how cold the rest of this week is going to be. And there's some snow and a lot of wind in the forecast. I'll break down those very important details here in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, definitely going to have a lot to go over. Sounds like a great week to just stay inside yeah. completely. Summer. Thank you so much. A North Dakota man who allegedly crashed into a Nebraska state trooper on purpose is now facing multiple charges. 56 year old Casey Martinson is charged with assault on an officer leaving the scene of an accident and operating a vehicle to avoid arrest. Now, according to court information, Martinson's bail is currently at $500,000. Last Thursday, a trooper spotted him driving a flatbed semi truck recklessly on Interstate 80 after he pulled over the semi. Martinson backed up into it into the patrol car and injured the trooper. Martinson was arrested after authorities released chemical agents and a dog in the truck's cab. Now, the trooper who made the initial stop was treated for a head injury. Governor Doug Burgum has announced the successor to Lieutenant Governor Brent Sanford. The governor's office chief operating officer, Tammy Miller, will take over on January 3rd. The governor's office chief operating officer, Tammy Miller, Miller has served as Chief Operating Officer since April of 2020, working with different cabinet agencies to improve the delivery of government services. Miller has served as CEO and board chair since 2006 at Fargo-based Border States. Sanford served as North Dakota's 38th Lieutenant Governor since he and Burgum took office in 2016, and they were re-elected to a second four-year term in 2020. Sanford cited a desire to return to the private sector and focus on his family, and career. Minnesota State Attorney General Keith Ellison is signing on to five new national settlements worth $20.4 billion with major opioid manufacturers Teva Pharmaceuticals and Allergan and three of the nation's largest retail pharmacy chains. Now, according to the AG's office, Minnesota's share of the agreement could be upwards of up to $235 million over 15 years. Ellison says the new settlements will bring more much-needed relief to communities in Minnesota and across the country that continue to suffer devastating effects from the opioid crisis. Local governments will soon receive notice of the settlements and will have until spring of 2023 to sign on to them. And a consumer alert, two of the nation's largest pharmacy chains are now limiting purchases of ibuprofen and acetaminophen for children because of short supply and high demand. Now, the move is being made despite outbreaks of flu and other respiratory illnesses. CVS is limiting shoppers to two products each. Walgreens is limiting online orders to six over-the-counter pain and fever relief products for children. 
Well, in the freezing temperatures, more than a dozen good Samaritans in Wisconsin helped save a horse that ran away and fell through the ice on a frozen lake in Grantsburg. Take a look at this. Those who were out there on the ice had to come up with their own way to get the horse out because the ice was only four inches thick, so a towing company could not bring out any heavy equipment. So rescuers settled for rope and nylon straps. They got him and now he's recuperating at the vet and due to their commitment to never give up or never let go. Those who saved him gave him a fitting name. And I named him Jack out here when we were from right. from Titanic. You know, <laughs> we'll never let go of Jack. So but we didn't. We held on to him the whole way. Now, while the story does have a happy ending, the DNR wants to remind you that ice on a lake is never 100% safe. You need at least four inches to walk on it. Well, in less than two weeks, a Minnesota's high school marching band will be performing on one of the world's biggest stages. David Schumann spoke to the students who are getting ready to perform in California's Tournament of Roses Parade. Precision. Timing. Mastery. The Rosemount High School Marching Band will put its talents on display for the world to see at the Tournament of Roses Parade in Los Angeles next month. The anticipation is so big that you don't really know how to prepare for it sometimes. She's being humble because this band absolutely knows how to prepare. Rosemount is one of six high school bands selected for the parade out of hundreds of applicants. They help each other. Um, there's such a sense of community with them and our parents and our school district. For Jackson Jones and Grace Brandt, both seniors, the performance will be crowning culminations of careers. It's the perfect senior year, really, because like um, for ending with like this big bang, like we're like on TV with everybody. It's like really exciting. Even going into marching band as like a ninth grader, I never would have expected it to like go this far, but. Now that we're here, it's, it's really cool. Don't underestimate the task ahead for these kids. Marching in the Rose Parade is truly a feat of athleticism. It is long. The parade route is almost six miles. So the kids will be playing two and a half hours and marching for two and a half hours straight. That's the endurance part that we have to really work on and get ready. They'll be ready because these 235 students aren't just a band. It's more than that. It's like a big, huge band family. We spend so much time together, like everyone is like they're closer than just friends are. In Rosemount, David Schumann, WCCO 4 News. And Rosemount is no stranger to the Rose Parade as this will be their second time performing in it. A watch party is planned to take place on January 2nd. Well, a big boost for the Salvation Army's Christmas campaign. Three gold coins were discovered in red kettles around Fargo. They were valued at more than $5,000. One was found in a kettle at Hornbachers on 32nd Avenue South and another at the Northport Hornbachers. To date, the Fargo-Moorhead Red Kettle campaign has raised more than $507,000, which is more than half of the $1 million Christmas goal. If you don't have change or can't make it to a kettle, you can also give to the campaign virtually, and we have a link to that on your VNL News app.